Hey, Mr. P here. What's up, guys? It's Mr. Schmitz. And in this video, we're going to highlight the differences and similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells. Let's go. All right, so first we're gonna start with a prokaryotic cell, and prokaryotic cell loosely translates to what? Uh, so if we break down our word linguistically, right, and look mm -hmm. at the prefix pro, pro means before, and then the root word in the middle is karyo. The, the term karyo translates to kernel, which loosely, biologically speaking, we apply to a nucleus. So the term prokaryote literally means before nucleus. And so we're talking evolutionarily speaking, prior to the development of the nucleus. Right. So these cells would have been our first cells. These cells are your simpler cells, and they would lack a nucleus. That's kind of a defining characteristic of the prokaryotic cell. So what else do we have about the prokaryotic cell? So when we dive into the actual structure and we see that this image has kind of pulled back the layers of the pillus and the capsule and the cell wall and the plasma membrane, we can see that inside there is still DNA. The DNA is in a form of a single circular chromosome that happens to be kind of all jumbled up into this nucleoid region. It looks very nucleus-esque, but it is not an actual nucleus because it lacks a nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane. The DNA will be kept safe by keeping it in the nucleoid region. Around the nucleoid region, you can see that there is cytoplasm, which is the cytosol containing fluid that fills the inside of a cell membrane within a cell. And there are a bunch of free ribosomes, which the bacterial cell, in this case, uses to produce proteins. Moving out of the cell membrane, which is the structure that encloses the cell, in a prokaryotic cell, you have a cell wall, which is always composed of peptidoglycan, and then you have, in some cases, a thick capsule on the outside of the cell wall, which serves as a protection of harsh environmental conditions. On the outside of that, you will see that in this case, there is a pilus or pili, which the cell uses to attach itself to its environment. And then to round out all of the external structures, you have a flagella, which is a tail that the cell uses to move. Would all prokaryotic cells have the pilus and flagellum? No. So that's sort of an optional attachment? Yes. An upgrade, perhaps? An upgrade, very much. It is much easier to move yourself through your environment if you have a flagella versus not having a flagella. So the, the basic structure of your prokaryotic cell, you're going to have the cell membrane and the cell wall, nucleoid region, and ribosomes and cytoplasm. Yep. It is important to know as we get into the next slide, which is going to highlight the eukaryotic cell structures. This one, like you said, is very simple. It lacks a lot of the other organelles that you've become maybe accustomed to seeing within a cell diagram. And so if we kind of keep this picture in our mind and compare it to the eukaryotic cell, you can see that it is incredibly less complex than the eukaryotic cell is. And there are a variety of things that the eukaryotic cell structures afford a eukaryotic cell, which ultimately will afford a multicellular organism once we put these together into various tissues. So to give you a chance to just look at the eukaryotic cell here and take in and appreciate all of the different structures that are present, most of the labeled structures we would call organelles or membrane-bound organelles, and we will get into some of those more specifically as we go. But to start with, the term eukaryotic, again, has the same root word in the middle there of karyo, meaning kernel. The prefix eu in this instance refers to the term true. So the term eukaryotic literally means true nucleus, which opposes the prokaryotic before nucleus. So with the eukaryotic cell is the first time that you see a nucleus surrounding your DNA in the cell. And again, talking evolutionarily speaking, right? Both of these have been on the planet a while. Eukaryotic cells, though, more recently evolved than the prokaryotes. So let's dive into the eukaryotic cell a little bit. So again, going from the most centralized structure, the nucleus, which contains its own nuclear envelope, you can see that the nuclear envelope is actually double membrane. It has pores, those little holes that allow certain things to come out. Again, we'll talk about that later in the class. Inside of the nucleus, there is a dense core called the nucleolus. The nucleolus is where all of our kind of condensed DNA is going to be kept. Moving out through the nuclear envelope into the cytoplasm, you see a variety of other organelles. The most closely associated organelle with the nucleus would be the ER. There are two types. You have rough ER and smooth ER. What is the main difference with those? So the rough ER gets its name because it is studded with ribosomes. So there are ribosomes attached to the rough ER. 
uh, which gives you a glimpse into its function as well because we know that ribosomes help us make proteins and so the rough ER also helps with protein production. The smooth ER lacks those ribosomes, which is where it gets the name the smooth ER. But both endoplasmic reticulums, both rough and smooth, are both utilized in the creation of different compounds. Like you said, rough endoplasmic reticulum utilizes the ribosomes to make proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum makes lipids and other cholesterol-type components. Some other features of the cell, uh, we have the Golgi apparatus, which helps us to package and transport those proteins. And then, obviously, we have the ribosomes that you can see floating about as well. We have free-floating ribosomes. The mitochondria, which creates energy by taking in sugars and breaking them down into ATP. I will never say that it is the powerhouse. Yeah, no. Uh, that would be a pet peeve of us as, mm -hmm. as science teachers. There yeah. are other ways to describe the mitochondria's function. Right. It's an organelle that utilizes cellular respiration and chemiosmosis to produce ATP in the presence of glucose. Absolutely. Not the powerhouse of the cell. Remember that for your vocab quiz. Yes. So there are other structures like lysosomes, vacuoles, vesicles. All of those are going to be used to help transport things throughout the cell. You'll see on this diagram that there are secretory vesicles, which are actually special vesicles that are going to be secreted from the cell by the Golgi. All of those particular vesicles are going to be containing proteins that are going to be used extracellularly. So there are instances in your body that utilize these eukaryotic cells to produce proteins that are going to be used within the cell in an intracellular metabolic reaction, but also there are going to be instances where proteins are made for extracellular function and are going to be secreted out of the cell, like pepsin, which is an enzyme that you secrete into your stomach that helps you break down proteins. So in our eukaryotic cells, you can see, based on this diagram, the size comparison between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. And we've been talking about the terms prokaryotic and eukaryotic for several minutes now. Just to make sure we're all on the same page, when we're talking eukaryotic cells, we are talking plant and animal cells. Mm -hmm. Prokaryotic cells would be, a, a good example of those would be bacteria. So just to kind of keep that in the back of your mind while we're talking about these. These are, when we're saying eukaryotic, these are our body cells or cells of another eukaryotic organism like another animal or a plant. Right. And prokaryote cells can only be unicellular, meaning they are only able to live as a single-celled organism. Eukaryotic cells can actually live as a unicellular organism or can help make multicellular organisms by coming together into tissues which make up organs and continuing up that hierarchy of organization that we've talked about before. Yeah, let's um, actually go ahead and compare a couple of these. So in comparing prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells, it's an important distinction to keep in mind what the terms mean. Right, so prokaryotic cells means it lacks a nucleus. It has, however, a nucleoid region whereas a eukaryotic cell contains a nucleus. We talked about prokaryotes being smaller. In fact, they're one to five micrometers, whereas the eukaryotic cells are larger. They typically range 10 to 100 micrometers. And we don't expect you to, to know how big a micrometer is, but the comparison is what's important here. So we're talking 10 to 20 upwards of that times larger as a eukaryotic cell than a prokaryotic cell. So vastly different sizes. Prokaryotic cells, like we mentioned before, evolved before the, the evolution of the nucleus, and so they are a much older cell. They have been around for a lot longer, evolutionarily speaking, whereas a eukaryotic cell would be a newer, more modern version. The prokaryotic cells, like we mentioned, lack the membrane-bound organelles. The only organelle that they did have was the ribosome, which technically is not inside of a membrane. Right. And so the eukaryotic cell does contain all of those membrane-bound organelles that we were mentioning previously. And those would include things like the rough ER, the smooth ER, the Golgi, the vesicle, the mitochondria, the chloroplast, the nucleus. All of those are membrane-bound because they contain their own membrane. Like Mr. Pfeiffer mentioned on the last slide, prokaryotic cells only live unicellularly, so they live a life alone. And eukaryotic cells can exist either unicellularly or multicellularly as a complex organism. So I have a question. We see instances in biology where prokaryotic cells are living in colonies or are able to make you sick by infecting a host. So is that a multicellular organism? I would say no, that that would still be a, a unicellular organism. It's just a group of unicellular organisms working in close proximity to one another. So thinking back to our ecology lectures, it would be a population of single-celled organisms. Absolutely. Prokaryotic cells are going to divide by binary fission. Again, we're going to talk cell division specifically in a later unit. 
but for now prokaryotic cells are going to produce other prokaryotic cells through the process of binary fission whereas eukaryotic cells employ mitosis in order to make them thinking back to our last lecture remember old cells come from new cells is one of the three components of the cell theory and so you can see that no matter what type of cell you are prokaryote versus eukaryote you still have a form of cell division and prokaryotic cells have a single chromosome which is circular and eukaryotic cells contain multiple chromosomes that are linear. So what do they have in common? Well, to start with, both of them have DNA. We talked about how they are both going to reproduce, and in order to reproduce, you have to pass on genetic material, so they both possess DNA. They both possess the cell membrane that surrounds the outside of the cell, the phospholipid bilayer, if you remember our phospholipid discussion. They both possess ribosomes. We, we talked about how proteins are responsible for most of the functions of the cell. They both need proteins, so they both have ribosomes. And they both possess a cytoplasm, um, which is that semi-fluid liquid inside of the cell. They also can both have flagella, which propel them um, and allow them to move. Not every cell has them, but they're both capable of having them. That is a pretty comprehensive list of the differences and similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This, this video was supposed to high... No, I don't like that. What was I going to say? Sorry. I mean, <laughs> you're good. You just said that. So hopefully now you have a better appreciation of the differences and similarities between both bacterial-based cells like prokaryotes and the eukaryotic cells that help make multicellular organisms like you. We will have a chance to dive into these a little bit more in some microscopy activities as well. So look forward to taking a look at both of these types of cells. If you like the video, subscribe. We'll see you. Thanks, guys.